My name is Hilary Lamb and this is the 100% Project podcast series. In this series, we are talking about psychological safety for men, specifically when requesting flexible working conditions so that they can share in home and family responsibilities. Our new research, Breaking Dad, has found that men don't always get a good reception from employers and colleagues when requesting this flexibility. So we're exploring the personal stories of men who have first-hand experience of making these requests. Today I'm talking with Jono Willis, Legal Counsel for Lion in New Zealand. Welcome Jono. Thank you Hilary, great to be here. Great to have you to talk to Jono, thank you for your time. So can you start by telling us a bit about yourself? I am based in New Zealand in Auckland and I've been with Lion for uh, almost nine years. Now I am the General Counsel for New Zealand and also the UK and the US. I have a wife, Katie, who's she's got a, a very busy role as a lawyer at a law firm where she's a partner, and we have our lovely daughter Pippa, who's eighteen months old. So, obviously, you've you've enjoyed spending a bit of time with her as she's been growing in that first eighteen months. Yeah, I, like she's she's getting a huge amount of personality at the mo- at the moment. She's going through a real finding herself and finding her her um her voice. My sort of parenting story is. Um, Because both me and my wife both have jobs and careers that we take quite seriously, we always had a real focus on wanting to both be heavily involved in the parenting and and share that between us. So uh, my wife took um, parental leave for the first five months of Pippa's home and Pippa was born and then she went back to work and I then um, stepped back from work and took three months parental leave looking after Pippa myself, which was one of the best three months of my life. It was great. What prompted you initially to decide to take or apply for that extended parental leave? My wife and I, Katie, have have always talked about how we wanted to approach parenting and we both, it was important to us that we shared that between us. And with Katie's career, where it was, she'd only just become a partner at a law firm. So she, it was going to be a hard time for her to step back and she wanted to continue the momentum she had in her own career. And so it was just, for us, it was about, not only was it something we both wanted to do for our child, Pippa, in terms of both of us being there and present, but it was also about being equal and fair from our career perspective and making sure we both had the right, you know, fair amount of opportunity and and shared the, the workload, so to speak, of parenting between us so that it didn't impact our careers. So we made a decision um, pretty early on. Uh, we, we we talked about it before Katie was pregnant, but uh, you know, pretty early on in the pregnancy, we we aligned that Katie was going to go back to work sometime in the first six months, and that I was going to then take an extended period of being um, the primary caregiver. Were you one of the first men to to apply for extended parental leave? I'm certainly the first that actually utilised Lion's paternity leave policy. So. Just before I went on parental leave, Lion did roll out a new parental policy, which allowed the primary caregiver to have three months fully paid if they became the primary caregiver at any time in the first two years. How did they make you feel when you approached the organisation and and asked for that period of leave? My leader was was really supportive around it, and then everyone in and around the organisation that I had a touch point with was very supportive. So I was very, I was very lucky in that front. But I've heard many different stories of of people from from different different businesses where these policies were in place that didn't have such a you know such an open arms approach to someone looking to take advantage of the policy. It's great that the leaders within the organisation were really positive and approachable with regards to that. But some of the research that we've done, specifically with Breaking Dad, it's uncovered that there are in many cases passive aggressive or or micro behaviours from colleagues when men do decide to take extended parental leave because it's not the norm. So were there any behaviours that that you saw or you received from colleagues, either big or small, that maybe indicated they were either unsupportive or, or maybe just surprised by your request? to do that? Oh, absolutely. So look, I'd say firstly, the vast majority of the feedback I got was overwhelmingly supportive. The thing that I probably caught me the most was people would say say things that they thought were casual or, or even a bit funny, but they didn't realise the implications of, of that, what that could potentially have on someone's sort of thought process about taking parental leave. So it would be, you know, things like, you know, um, saying things that are slightly demeaning way about 
taking time off or you know having a break or stepping back as if it's not as going to be as hard as your normal day job which I think is shows a bit of disrespect to how full-on full-time parenting is and there was a little bit of that but it, it never came from a place of malice I'd say Hillary so there'd be the odd sort of jovial comment but it was more people trying to have a, a laugh um, or to be you know friendly but actually the impact of those sorts of comments is to put doubt in people's mind and to feel a bit belittled about what they are doing. I'm pretty robust when it comes to those things, but it still even impacted me when you sort of hear those sorts of comments. I suppose one of the lessons I took was if anyone's taking those leaves, those little easy jokes that you think are a bit funny aren't actually helpful at all. You mentioned there about doubting or potentially doubting what you're doing. So did you respond to those in any way or did you thought, oh, well, you know, I I won't make a big thing about it? How did you respond to that? Um, With a big laugh and a smile and a, oh, yeah, we'll see. So that's normally how I responded if I was being honest about it. But again, the vast majority of people were very supportive of it. And the people who did that, it was, I'd honestly say it came from a place of, uh, you know, maybe ignorance is, is a word that's a bit too harsh, but it often came from people who hadn't been primary caregivers themselves or maybe didn't even have children. So they didn't really understand. I, I, I must say that the, the people who you know, had children were a little bit more closer to what parenting really meant, that was much less likely to be a, a line or a joke that came out of them. Yes, I guess it's human nature, isn't it? You can't really understand the situation until you've been in that position yourself. So part of the benefits is men taking more parental leave gives them much more insights into uh, what the majority of women go through um, when they the way they take parental leave. One hundred percent, Hillary, and I think that's something that that was really telling for me. So if I step back before I went on parental leave and I think about what what one of the reasons why I think dad's taking parental leave is a great thing. Not only do I think it's you know a good thing for the child the child or the children that you have to share that. But if we really genuinely believe in breaking the glass ceiling and having 50% of women in senior roles and and changing some of those those gender imbalances we have at a senior level, I, I really do think that the fact that it is women that often have to carry the vast majority of the, the time on parental leave is one of the things that makes it harder for them to get to that position. And if we have more sharing of parenting between males and females, I think that will help create a more equal place in the workforce. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing if a mother wants to take 12 months and be the primary caregiver herself. That's a that's a choice thing, but it shouldn't be something that society expects of anyone. And then I was sort of the second part that sort of flows from that. I think the more men that take parental leave, the more understanding they are of being in the shoes of the primary caregiver. I felt very secure in my role and good about my where I was at in line. So I was going on parental leave from a pretty strong base, feeling pretty secure. And I was only away for three months. So it's not a huge amount of time. And when I came back, even I had quite significant self-doubt in terms of I was worried about who'd been in my role, how well they'd been doing my role while I was away, you know, whether, you know, people were wondering, you know, what did I actually do when I was here, you know, what value was I bringing? I started questioning my own value that I I brought and it was probably all slightly irrational thinking but it was thinking that certainly went through my mind And, and Lion did a great job of supporting me on my return which helped. But it got me thinking, if, sheesh, if I felt that from a pretty secure place and only away for three months, man, it must be hard for a, a primary caregiver coming back from parental leave. And it made me really understand the amount, how much harder it is for mums who have come back, but also any other dads that take parental leave. It's a challenge and you need to put a framework in place to help those people return to work and to make them feel secure coming back into their roles. Uh, I think you've raised some really good, significant issues there to, to be addressed. Before touching on your return to work, how did you feel during the the three months that you took off? Yeah, I had a, it was a a pretty telling moment. Um, I was in my first week on parental leave and I was still on the leadership team WhatsApp group and a message came through saying that we had just suffered a, a major cyber attack over the weekend and that everything was shut down. We couldn't brew, we couldn't sell, we couldn't do anything. And a cyber attack, obviously, if someone's got into your personal data, there's a lot of legal issues and I rang my leader to be like, you know, do you need my help? Do I need to get involved in this? And my leader said to me at the time, she was like, you are the primary caregiver for your child. You can't be looking after your child as well as being involved in work. We've got this. You go 
you know, enjoy being a dad and looking after your daughter and we will, we will cover this. And it was really telling for me and I, I couldn't, I can't uh, overestimate, uh, overstate how important it was to me to know that actually I was going to be given the, the space to be a dad and focus on being a dad. And I wasn't going to, they weren't going to try and make me keep doing parts of my role and and keep me sort of trying to carry both of them because that would have been unmanageable so that was that was great and then so the second thing was you you do sort of do want to stay across what's happening though so very early on both um the the, my key business partners that i work with but also my leader they chatted to me about what did i want to stay close to how did i want to keep in the loop and we we agreed a framework effectively for how i would still be kept in the loop so I had monthly catch-ups with my, my leader and I also had a couple of matters where I stepped, I stayed being copied to just so I was across them even though I wasn't having to do the work and that made me feel like I was across what was happening. I wasn't completely in the dark but I knew I had the support of the business to, to focus on being a dad which was which was right for me. It's easy to try and have a foot in each camp, isn't it? You feel maybe an obligation even though you're on leave to check your emails regularly and talk to people and find out what's going on did you and and the way that line have, have approached it sounds as though it really helped you to disconnect but still know that you were in the loop with some of the major issues that were going on did you did you find that easy to step into that process of just I'm you know my role is as primary caregiver to my daughter I'm going to let the business run or did you still try and emotionally try and keep a, a foot in each each in each camp the first week or two it was hard the first week or two it was you'd still be sent emails or you'd be copied to emails and you'd want to respond and or get involved um or people would be calling your mobile with you know questions not knowing that you're on parental leave so in those first couple of weeks it was hard to, to emotionally disengage from work but once you sort of set um got comfortable in your new role and got comfortable with how you were going to deal with those those queries that came in. And, and, and frankly, you started getting copied to less emails as you stopped being responsive to them and and, and being all over your, your inbox. I very quickly got quite comfortable in being very much focused on being, you know, the primary caregiver to Pippa. And so and so much so I'd say that, you know, by the by the third month I was on parental leave, I was very much engaged on 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 parent life very much more so than um, being in my inbox all day every day so you know the old habit when you when you're in a job like I am is to be pulling your phone out and scrolling through your emails and as time went on I certainly my screen time and my screen report will tell you I was looking at my phone a lot lot less was there any thought of applying for a further extension of your leave? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, my last month it was quite funny. The lockdown, another lockdown hit here in um, in Auckland, and I just happened to be down in Wanaka, which is down in the South Island of New Zealand. It's a beautiful part of the country, and so I, which didn't go into lockdown because it didn't have any COVID cases. So I had this amazing month where I was in this beautiful scenery. I was going on these walks with Pippa in a front pack each day, and finishing the day having a a beer with Pippa at the Spatzel House. House on the on the waterfront of Lake Wanaka, and I, I did think long and hard. I was like, "This is pretty good." I was certainly living a, a pretty good life at that point, but I I wanted to get back to work. I wanted to get back into it, so I was happy. Yeah. I was happy to end when I did. Yeah, perfect. So, do you think you were treated the same way as a woman would have been treated had she been taking parental leave? I mean, that that societal norm. It's just, oh yes, yeah, you go off and parental leave. This is what you do. It's fairly standard. Do you think you received maybe more attention because you're a man or? It's a challenging question because I I probably haven't thought about it in much detail, but if I reflect on that, I'd say, yes, I did get treated differently. I I probably got given more encouragement and support and sort of, you know, good on you and well done maybe than than a a mum would have because it was more expected for a mum to do it. I mean, I don't know that because I've never been in the shoes of a mother, but I do feel like there was a bit of over and above, you know, support for me, and partly that maybe that's because I was the first, one of the first uh, males within our organisation to be taking the paternity leave. It was more known and and talked about, so that could have driven it a little bit. But if we get to a world where there are more men taking parental leave and it's more evenly shared off the back of people like me being supported into it, then I don't think that's a bad outcome in the long run. 
I was going through in my head, how do I feel about this? John O getting more attention than a woman because the women do it all the time and they're supposed to be able to, you know, move from the work environment, look after the children and go back and slot in seamlessly back into work. You know, why shouldn't a man get more attention? But I think, as you said, the more visibility that those situations are getting or more, more um, visibility they're having uh, and normalising it, I think more men will take up that opportunity. I think that's right. And I think, and back to what we were talking about earlier, it's going to mean more men having more genuine empathy for what a mother's going through when she's leaving work and coming back than they otherwise may have, which is going to be helpful in the workforce. And it means more men taking parental leave, hopefully, in the long run, which equally brings you know, positive outcomes. And I think if I think about what I've seen in New Zealand in particular since, since I took my paternity leave, I know of at least five uh, other guys within the business who have gone on to take paternity leave. Each of them reached out to me pretty soon after I'd taken it, asking me about it, how it had worked, how I'd approached my leader, you know, what feedback I'd received, you know, a bit nervous about it, I'd say, to start with. And I was very glowing in my and my recommendation of taking it and saying that I'd had all the support, you know, I could have I could have hoped for. And it was great to see other guys taking it up. And I'm really, really excited that it hasn't just been me who's done it and talked about it, but there are more and more men within our organization, you know, taking up the policy. I think it's a great thing for for everyone and for Lion in the long run. Yeah, definitely. Have you heard anything that, you know, the the reaction of their employers was, well, not sure about that, we'll have to check it out or or being maybe less supportive than the reaction that you received? Yeah, I, I absolutely have. And a friend of mine, he worked uh, in a law firm and they had a policy and he double-checked the policy that allowed for a primary caregiver for the, the male to take that and be be paid for an extended period. And then when he approached his, his leader about it, they were not very supportive at all. They made it clear that while it was a policy, it wasn't the expectation that it would be taken up. He was let him, he was let know that it might impact his ability to get his next promotion or progression, and made to feel very, you know, questioned in his decision making and taking that, which I just think is absolutely outrageous because the whole point of these policies, if they're not supported, then they're just they're literally just being put up in lights and window washing to try and recruit people in a misleading way or to pretend that they've got a better approach to inclusion and and parenting and and diversity. So I think, and I'm casting aspersions here, but while some companies have the policies, not all of them live by those standards to the same degree that I think Lion genuinely has. It's one thing having the policy in place. It's another thing, somebody actually coming and applying for it and what the reality is of that. So that's what our, our Breaking Dad uh, research found is that not all employers are accepting of those requests. And interesting, you were saying that the men were anxious about going to their employers and asking for extended parental leave. So organisations have to really talk about what the benefits there there are of, of having men taking parental leave, sharing their family responsibilities. But one of the things there you mentioned intrigues me a bit. Um, your colleague or the person you were talking to said that their leader, their manager told them it may affect future leadership opportunities, future promotional opportunities, which is something that women worry about all the time. It's out of sight, out of mind. So, how do you feel about that? Having heard that from somebody else and applying that to maybe women who go through this every time they take three, six, 12 months off, has that been something that you've thought about since then? I must admit, I probably had a bit of a blind spot, Hillary. You know, like you you know that there are things that you you, you know about that are unfair or that are tough on other people, but you don't truly understand it until you, you see it for yourself in some ways. And it's sad that that's the case, but I, I'd say I absolutely had a bit of a blind spot for how hard it was for women or men taking parental leave and the doubt that would put on them about whether it's going to impact their future career prospects, or whether it's going to um, make it harder for them to get um, promotions or, or grow their role within a company. But looking at it now, absolutely, I can see why people would have those concerns. And without the organisation putting in place really clear frameworks that go wider than just the leader and the person taking leave, you know, that where there is a wider 
organizational response to support someone going on on parental leave it's going to that's always going to be the case and so I, I think that you not only have to to do that but even if you do that people are going to have those doubts because people do worry that when they're away it's going to impact their their career so if you know that no matter what you do people are going to have concerns that means that you need to be doing even more you know that means that organizations need to be taking even f- bigger steps more overt steps to give comfort to those people that they will still be front of mind they're still going to be on the talent matrix they're still going to be considered when they're talking about their benching for key roles they're still getting feedback at an achievement review time for the work they did in the three months before they went on parental leave they still have a development plan that they've got in place that is relevant you know like all of that stuff should still be there and then it should be a conversation with the person on going on parental leave about how much they want to be engaged with those things while they're on parental leave because some people will want less and some people will want more but making sure that they know that all of those things are available and they will still be in the system and considered for all opportunities it's critical you seem as though you've had a great number of insights from actually walking in the shoes of mostly women in the past so the, the research has found that uh, men need to be involved in, in gender issues if we're going to accelerate the pace of change and, as you said, give women the opportunity to take on promotional opportunities and more leadership opportunities. So you're a leader and an influencer within your organisation and no doubt within your, your industry and profession as well. So what do you think you'll do with those new insights that will benefit women and, of course, men? Yeah, it's a, it's a good challenge, I suppose. I suppose what I've been doing to date has been every opportunity I have to talk about um, my experiences and, and the blind spot that I had, uh, which I just talked about, about how I didn't realise just how hard it is. And I think continuing to, to talk on things like this, to share with your network, to talk to your you know, influential people within your own organisation and other organisations, you're just going to take every opportunity you can to, to spread the message. So... I know when I talk to law firms that we work with, our external law firms, I often talk about it with them and ask them what they're doing. And it's about taking the opportunities you have to share your your views on it. And um, what I've, I've found interesting is that the more people see it working for Lion and they see the positive response happening to a to us putting in place policies that help support men and women going on and coming back from parental leave, the more it sets a standard. And the more that standard is set and that becomes a competitive advantage for recruiting key talent, hopefully that forces more organisations to follow suit and it becomes a cultural norm. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, is it becomes a societal norm that, that shared parenting is normal and that it is a choice of the parents about how they want to do it, but it is not looked at any differently whether you're a male or a female taking it. It's a decision for the parents and what's best for that particular parental unit. Because right now it is it's it is looked at differently, which I think is just wrong. And then secondly, the frameworks we have in place, both from a you know legislative support you get in terms of the government support you're given, but also a lot of the policies within organisations are structured in such a way that you've got to be the pr- the primary caregiver in the first few months, which effectively rules out men. So we've got these structural setups that mean that it's not going to be shared equally, and that's you know that's a problem. So the more we can create a shift in the norms of people's thinking and create the structures to make sure it can be done equally, the better. I've read a lot of research that says the majority of men, and we're talking maybe 75% of men who are fathers, want to spend more time with their family. So I guess my question is, what is stopping them? If 75% of men would like to spend more time, and obviously economics come into play because unfortunately with um, in a lot of organizations men still are in the leadership positions so they are paid more than the women but if we can address that separately what is it that's stopping men from from taking this time off yeah I'll start with the structural point first and then I'll talk about the, the mindset that that creates so let's take a Joe Bloggs company in New Zealand or Australia that has a parental leave policy that says you are entitled to three months parental leave if you're the primary caregiver. To be the primary caregiver, you must have predominant care for the child from you know day one, effectively. Now, that means that if you choose to breastfeed your child, it is almost impossible for that to be the male. And that means that the way that that policy is viewed, if you are a, a male, is I don't want to be the primary caregiver from day one. That's not going to work for us as parents. And therefore, that's not an option available to me. There might technically still be an ability for them to take 
an extended leave, for example, to do it. But that's a whole different mentality and, and thought. So if you go to approach your your organisation and say, I'd like to take six months extended leave to look after my, my child, it doesn't have the same feeling of absolutely that will be given and support that you have if it's a, applying for a parental leave policy. So I think that because we have these structural setups that aren't fair, men feel like they don't have that option and then they feel like the only option they've got is to apply for an extended leave and extended leave is as a general rule not as well supported and is it is often not looked at in the same way in terms of it's just seen as a bit of a jolly if you're taking extended leave or can be so people feel like it will impact their career prospects they might feel like it means that um it won't be supported by their organization and they don't want to ask so i think for me it's if you solve that structural problem and make it a norm then you'll see more of it uh, but then i think the second part i'd talk to is the flexible work thing i think is the other key one that's that's an interesting one to look at i mean all of the data that i've seen suggests that women are much more inclined to take up um, part-time and flexi roles over men and i think that's the next sort of frontier too is how do we have more men working four days a week, um, more, more men doing co-sharing roles so that they can do more of the parenting at home. Because uh, I think that's the other part that's almost expected more of women to take the part-time role as it is as opposed to men. So like, that's the other part I think we need to start encouraging and pushing towards. Yes, absolutely. I agree with with both of those. So what what can we do? And I think men in particular, because you know, so women have been banging on for this for ages. But what can men in particular do to start promoting this, to start making these changes and encouraging them to, to you know, take more of the parenting role? It's a really good question. I think the first thing is I'd be encouraging when men are looking for new roles or looking to move in the workforce, they should be asking companies what their policies are towards parental leave and men... Mm -hmm. Uh, flexi flexible working structures so make that something that is clearly driven regardless of gender so we're putting pressure so men are putting pressure on employers to think about that as part of their policy i think that we should be more overt in celebrating men that that take up flexible work or parental leave policies so often when you look at even the pamphlets or the language that's used in these policies it's got hidden gender bias in it towards often towards the females taking up those policies so we need to be very considered in the language we use to show that it's for for both I think lastly, we need to just be very clear and sharing with people that it is absolutely accepted and encouraged for you to look for flexible opportunities that work for you and your family and parenting um, styles. Because I think right now there's a lot of men out there who will be very keen to work, to take up such policies, that are, but they either don't know they're available or they think that they're going to be disadvantaged. So, Jono, having gone through this experience the first time, if you do choose to have any more children, would you do it all over again? Absolutely. If and when we, we do have a, another child, I'll, I'll definitely take on another you know, time at parental leave. Um, how I structure that, though, I don't know. So I suppose one thing that's awesome about the Lion policy, which I, I like, is you don't have to you know, be a full-time primary caregiver five days a week to get access to the policy. So the way the policy works is you can get fully supported, full pay for three months any time in the first two years. So say their, their wife or partner took um, maternity leave for the first 12 months. Some of them have taken a day and a half a week for a year or two days a week for, for six months. So there are multiple different ways you can actually structure it so that you can get the dads more involved in parenting, which I reckon is is great because it means that there are more opportunities and different ways to do it that work for more people and more families. You are one of a few men now who are taking the opportunity to have this extended leave and your experiences are so valuable for other men. And I guess when we started, we talked about psychological safety for men, so about having the opportunity to ask without being demeaned or feeling embarrassed. And this visibility is going to make it more normal. Um, but do you think that men spending time with their young children specifically, do you think the time that they spend with those children will be reflected in children's behaviour. Do you think there is a longer term impact of doing this as well? Uh, there's no doubt that that's the case, right? So like if you go to a micro level on, a, on an individual family unit, it may not be the case with everyone because some families are you know, brought up differently. But if you go to a macro level, I think if you have more men 
who are it's normalized to be the primary caregiver looking after their child more children will see that as normal so like i think it's a it's a a no-brainer that that will be creating positive change John, I, th- I think you're right, and it's uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you about your experiences on taking extended parental leave, both from the the business perspective, but also about you know spending time with Pippa with your daughter and how much you enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Hilary. Look, it's been great talking to you as well, and look, I hope plenty of of people out there listen to this and and get involved, and hopefully feel a bit better about taking the opportunity to to be a dad and take parental leave and more companies get better policies in place absolutely and i think we all need to start advocating for that to um to make some change thank you so much hillary if you'd like to find out more about our research and our podcast please visit our website for more information the 100 percentproject.com.au thank you for listening today 